this in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you have the master key, you have the master plan. Father, Lord, let us be part of your plan in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that even as we hear the word, O oh Lord, we will hear it and we will run with it in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of destruction, the spirit of violence, the Lord God, God. God. Father, Lord, we ask for maximum concentration, even as we hear your word. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen.
we will not be here today. I tell you, God has a better plan in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, Peter found out that God had a better plan. You are now to find out today that God has a better plan for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Or should we look at when uh, David came out, small boy, and said he was going to defeat Goliath? From where to where? But because God had a great plan, he did not allow the big and mighty men in that city go and say they will fight with Goliath. He allowed a small boy. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, you can go through all that there. And when he came out, God made him defeat Goliath. I said, God will give you victory over your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. But is it when the Israelites were sent out to go and spy the land, they came back with an evil report. But God had a better plan. Because as God gave them that plan in Numbers 13, God will give you a good plan in the mighty name of Jesus. However, our focus of today is on the plan God had to free the Israelites from the Midianites and where he used Gideon. I thought somebody would say amen. amen. God will use you today in the mighty name of Jesus. When Gideon and his army went into battle, they did not know that this was what was going to, to, to happen. But because God knew the end from the beginning, he delivered their enemies into their hands. God will deliver all your enemies into your hands today in the mighty name of Jesus. And you will discover and you will know. And you will find out and you will realize that the person with the best plan is no one but God. Praise the Lord. And so the first point is the realities of God's plan. We have to know that God's plan is a different plan. Praise the Lord. The first point there in knowing the realities of God's plan is to know that God's plan is a different plan. His ways are not our ways. The way he wants to undertake and undergo things in our life is not the way we, have been, we are looking at it. If we turn our Bible to Judges chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 2. Judges 7, 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with you are too many for me to, to give the Midianites unto your hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people 22,000, and there remained 10,000. And the Lord said unto Gideon again, The people are yet many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water, with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lappeth, putting their hands to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, will I save you, and deliver the Midianites unto your hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his own place. Praise the Lord. Gideon planned to go into this battle with 32,000 soldiers. But what happened? God said there are too many. Meanwhile, he was going to defeat an army of about 135,000 uh, uh, warriors. And so you begin to wonder, how come there are too many? But because God's ways are not man's ways, God knew that he didn't need that number. If, 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 if he wanted to, he could even use just one man to defeat that entire army. And so he reduced the, the size from 2,000 to 300. God always has a different plan. Gideon had a different plan, but God had a different plan for him. Before they went to war, I want to give us a brief. You know, during that period, there was great, you know, the Israelites were in darkness. Why? Because they were into idol worshipping. They were into doing things that were not right in the sight of God. And so they were undergoing serious punishment. In fact, the Midianites were sent by God to judge them, to deal with them because of what they did. You know, they would plant, by the time it's time for harvest, the Midianites will come and they will steal all their crops. They will steal their money, they will steal all their things. And so they were living in fear. They were living in worry. They were living and just managing for survival. I want to tell you today, I don't know what fear it is that you are living in. I don't know what problem it is that is dwelling upon you. But God is sending the deliverer unto you today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Israelites were humiliated. In Judges chapter 6 verse 1, if we look at it, 
they were humiliated. In fact, they were so scared of each other that they did not even know what to do again. They went into hiding. So that the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them in the hand of the Midianites. Ah, God will not deliver you unto your enemies in Jesus' name. <laughs> By the grace of God, you will be obedient. By the grace of God, you will not worship idols in the mighty name of Jesus. The Israelites suffered the consequence, the consequence for their sins, and at a point in time, they cried out unto the Lord. And what did God do? Every time He will give them a judge that will try and deliver them. Every time they go after, they will say, okay, we will serve you, they will serve God. As soon as that person left, or told them about what happened, they went back to their own ways. <laughs> for those of you that have been going back and forth, today will be the last day in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not go back to your own ways in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember the Bible says, he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. If you know you want God to rule and reign in your life, you have to move forward, not backward, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to tell you that God has a different plan for your life. And that plan for your life, you have to be willing, you have to be obedient, you have to walk in the light of the, of the, of the Most High God to experience it in the mighty name of Jesus. If we look at Luke chapter 22 verse 42, praise the Lord. Luke 22 verse 42. There he says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Begin to know that it's the will of God that will be done. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God will see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. Even when his plan contradicts your plan, even when his plan looks impossible, and you're like, ah, can this work? Or how else can you explain how a man will be able to assemble only 300 to defeat 135? But because we serve a living God, because we serve a God that can do what only Him can do, it is possible in the mighty name of Jesus. Because He did it that day, He will do it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10, He says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Only the counsel of the Most High God shall stand concerning you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know that God's plan is a declared plan. The way you take your declaration, that's how God has declared His plan concerning your life. Praise the Lord. God is ready to give you victory if only you are ready to, be, to, to obey Him. Praise the Lord. He is ready to even attack all your enemies on your behalf. Praise the Lord. Or how can you can, can you explain it that God got just 300 men? And what, what was what was it based on their faith? Praise the Lord. Your faith will not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. Your faith will not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. When you need your faith, your faith will not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God that you depend upon, that you stand upon, when it's time for you to move forward, you will not be found arguing, or you will not be found grumbling, you will not be found complaining in the mighty name of Jesus. And we come to Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. He says, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, you will not have any kind of unbelief that will stand between you and your plan. The plan God has for you in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, for very day I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, faith as small as a mustard seed, faith as little, he said you will be able to speak to the mountains in your life that they should be removed you know, to a yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, for, the, for God's plan that is declared in your life to come to be, you must have faith. God will give you that faith in the mighty name of Jesus. God is not asking for a leap in the dark. He is asking for a clear step of faith. If you can show it, God will lead you through in the mighty name of Jesus. When the angel of the Lord approached Gideon, you know, Gideon was there under the tree. He was trying to get wine from the grapes. And he called him the mighty man of valor. He said, no, you don't know me, oh. Me, my family, they are the weakest. They are the poorest. In fact, they should count every family. They cannot count my family. And he said that family that is limited. He said he was the one that was the most limited. Ah, I don't know what you have called yourself. God is bringing you out today in the mighty name of Jesus. So if it is that kind of man, how was that the person God chose that will deliver the people? God wants to choose you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know whether you are the one that God wants to use to deliver Nigeria, but you are there complaining and grumbling. I want to tell you to arise today. Don't ask Gideon to be challenged. Take up that challenge and God will say,
see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. But you know, before God will use you, He will try you. Gideon was tried. God may be trying you now, and you don't know because He has a better plan for you. He was told to go and get to the world the idols that they were worshipping because that was a destruction. But Gideon took on that challenge. I want to tell you that God is talking to you today. I don't know what idol you have. Don't say yes, you don't have something that you pour oil on or that you pour salt on. It could be your money. It could be your assets. What God has blessed you with. You have turned to an idol. I want to tell you to let go. And God will release you into your victory in the mighty name of Jesus. You cannot serve two masters. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Matthew 6 24. You are either on the north side or you are on the other, on the other side. He says no man can serve two masters. For either you will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Any other thing besides God is mammon. Any other thing besides God is mammon. Don't follow the wrong general. Follow the right general. Follow the commander in chief. He's your king of kings. He's your lord of lords. He is your master. He is your creator. He will do it for you. His plan for your life will not be derailed in the mighty name of Jesus. God's plan is a distinct plan. When God does something, He does it in a wonderful way, in a unique way. Or how else can you describe how God was able to use just one small boy with one stone? Remember, God gave David just five small rounded stones. And how many did He use? Just one. Even when they said, no, take this apple, take this shield, he said, this thing will weigh me down. I am going to this man in the name of the Most High God. I want to tell you that plan concerning your life. You are going to see it through in the name of the Most High God. Just as David was able to, to, to defeat Goliath, ah, God will see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. This distinct plan, God used just 300 men. These 300 men, they were not even skilled. In, in fighting, because they had become so fearful, they didn't even know how to fight again. 